Hello again and welcome to the Out of Bounds Sports Show, the podcast that brings you both national and local sports. Joining me today in the roundtable is Mike Capala, Sam Jennix, Zach Chalmers, who chimed in at the end of the show last Ooh. time, Nate Marsh, and Scott Mellis. I'm your host, Mr. Woolley, coming to you live from the Advanced TV class in second hour. Guys, we have a couple of different topics today, um, among which we're going to talk about the uh, Michael Sam and Jason Collins uh, being, you know, coming out, being openly gay athletes. Also talk about the Winter Olympics and their role in Sochi, and then a surprise topic for the end of the uh, discussion today. But let's start where we talked about the, uh, the first topic that we were talking about, Michael Sam and Jason Collins in both of their respective sports, Sam being a football player, Jason Collins a basketball player, coming out and being openly gay. My question to you is, is this really any topic at all, given your generation, and how do you feel about it? Who wants to start? Uh, it shouldn't be a topic. It's not even a big deal. I mean, even the players have come out and said that, like, not specifically Sam and, Co and Collins coming out, but, like, other players have just said that they don't care. They're good people. They're good in the locker room. They, they're good for the team. They don't care that they're openly gay players playing the sport. It's just another guy on your team. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if you're out there playing a sport, I mean, you don't really think about someone being openly gay. I mean, if they're doing their job out on the field, it shouldn't matter whether you're openly gay or not. I mean, it, it shouldn't really be a topic. I, you know, I, I was really surprised by the amount of media coverage that this received, you know. Um, and that, in this case, it almost seems like it's forced because, yes, you have had tweets come out from certain guys in the locker room that say that, that you know, we don't want them in here, blah, 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 blah. But I really feel like with your generation that this is a non-issue. It really doesn't matter to anybody, you know. I mean, and, and the fact of the matter is, too, you know, bottom line is that, having a gay athlete in your in your locker room has probably existed for many many years it's just been swept under the carpet for so for so long and people have been afraid to admit it um watching jackie robinson's movie 42 it wasn't too long ago that we didn't even consider having black athletes in pro professional sports so it's like it's time that we change you know yeah, yeah i agree they're blowing it way out of proportion than they're, yeah. making it, they're making it a bigger deal than they, they have to. The media is making this what it is, yeah. not the teams. They're judging athletes on their, if they're gay or not, not on their skill level. Yeah, it does. It, it seems like almost a, um, a moot point to even have the discussion at all because if you look at it, the bottom line is do they produce? You know, I think a, a couple of media outlets were speculating whether or not Jason Collins' <coughs> decision affected whether or not he was getting picked up by NBA teams. The bottom line is he's just not that good a basketball player. Yeah. yeah, you know. I don't think it was the fact that he came out. It was the fact that he had like two. Re he, when he came back for the for the Nets, he had like two rebounds and then he fouled out. Yeah, he played like twelve minutes. Yeah. yeah. If you can play, you can play. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all like the, the same teams thing. Care if, like, well. if like Michael Jordan was to be gay or not, do you think they would have treated him like, no. no, because he's a superstar. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who just happens to be gay? Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I I think it's it's a non-issue. I was very surprised by the media's coverage, and I'll be honest with you, a little bit disappointed in, in certain media outlets. Um, some of the bigger ones too that were really seemingly pressing this down your throat time and time again. And the bottom line is, I really feel, especially with your generation, there's a lot more in the way of tolerance and a lesson to be learned from, you know, for, for older generations is that you just get over it. When yeah. times are changing, everybody's a mixed bag of, of whatever, and, and we're, we're moving on from here, you know? Then uh, even some of the NFL teams that were interviewed about Michael Sam being openly gay, I mean, he had a great combine, and... Even the NFL team said that they don't care if he's openly gay. They're going to pick him because he's a good football he player. He destroys not. people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're the SEC player of the year. Yeah. That's, that's a pretty good league, from what yeah. I hear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, uh, talking about one good league to another, the NHL uh, took a two-week hiatus and headed out to the Winter Olympics, and it went off with a relative success. The, the viewers that tuned into the Winter Olympics, many of them had said that the hockey was the most exciting portion of the Winter Olympics. But... After all was said and done, a couple players were lost. One hit close to home here uh, due to a back injury, and he's going to be out for an extended period of time, and that's Henrik Zetterberg. Uh, Jonathan Tavares of the New York Islanders, their captain, um, he was injured, blew out his knee for the rest of the year. And this is a really sticky subject because you're playing high-level hockey for two weeks and then trying to come back for the playoff race. 
that's ensuing, and, and everybody knows. You, you can watch a sport, not watch a sport. The NHL playoffs is one of the most intense and uh, uh, hardcore times a year that you can have. Guys, the question is, should the NHL and other uh, professional sports even think about considering taking a break for an Olympic break like this? Was it worth it? Uh, I don't know. I think I think it's kind of ridiculous that they just stopped the NHL completely. They just shut it down for two weeks for us to for for them to go play for their home countries is cool, but I mean, they don't let professional baseball players when it used to be in the Olympics. They didn't let professional baseball players play. It, it should be the same. They should have a regulation on it. I mean, if you look at the 1980 Olympics and with the with miracle and all that, I mean, you see those college kids. I mean, they're out there competing like their hearts out. I mean, they want to win gold. Where I'm not saying these NHL players don't want to like they don't they don't compete hard, but you're going against your teammates. You know, like I'm you know what I'm saying. Like if if Brooks or Pick goes against Sidney Crosby in the corner, he's not going to go run them because they're teammates. I mean, you just don't do that. Where if you if you brought college and junior level kids. They don't care who you are. They're gonna hit you, and they're gonna they're gonna want to win. I mean, I don't know. I I just think that taking putting NHL players in the Olympics kind of kind of hurts what it does. I mean, like like NHL organizations were complaining because their all star players were getting hurt. I mean, Henrik Zetterberg is the main success here in Detroit, and he's out for eight weeks with the back. I mean. I, I just know. think you it's go, too big of yeah. an investment to be able to take a two-week break like they're doing. And, you know, Winter Olympics has to be played in winter, obviously, right? Yeah. And that's when the NHL season is. And I think you're right. I think right now, though, the difference that bringing back the amateurs. So you've got a great program here in, in the United States with the selects, you know, USA selects team. They're great. But they don't even get a chance to compete on that world stage. That's a disappointing thing for them. The best that they get to offer is what's called the World Junior Championships, and nobody really watches that. Whereas if you put them back in the Olympics against those same level of competition, um, you would get get a chance to see all these players play. And maybe you make an, an age exemption if it's a guy like, um, I know Jonathan Erickson's brother played in it, right? He's a professional, but he's in a lower tier league. Maybe you make an ex exemption for those kind of guys. But I would really appreciate seeing some of those like United States selects teams, uh, kids get the opportunity to be able to play hockey at a higher level and then still get to see the best players in the world in the NHL. And uh, my point being this, back in 1980, when the Soviet Union, Russia now, was, was going full bore, they were professionals. They were paid, they played quote unquote through the Red Army, but they were professional hockey players. They had a distinct advantage over the rest of their competition. That is not the case anymore. The NHL is now a worldwide league the best players from all over the world compete in the National Hockey League. And I think if you did reduce it back to amateur status only, I think you'd still see some great competitive hockey. You'd have the same storylines just like you did in 1980. No question about it. Definitely. Well, let's stick in the world of hockey here. Um, we're going to bring it real local and, <laughs> and do it right here. I think a couple of the guys here have some questions for uh, our own Scotty Malice. Scott is getting ready today to uh, well explain to everybody what's going on today, Scott. Uh, I'm going to play in the uh, Maha State Hockey Tournament this weekend. What's that mean? Uh, eight teams are competing for a state championship. So you, we have teams from all over Michigan, or are they relatively close? As far yeah, as they're all over team? Michigan. Give all us a, give us an idea of what who's playing in this tournament. Uh, well, we got two two teams from like around here. From like we play at Hazel Park, uh, us and the Michigan Ice Hawks, and you got a team from uh, Sault Ste. Marie. Um, you got teams from Gaylord, and then you got teams from like Livonia and the Farmington area, because you all play out of, you got teams from your certain districts, and that's all over Michigan. UP and Lower Peninsula too. So where are you guys ranked, and what do you think your chances are of, of making it out of the state? I mean, obviously you're gonna you know push for your team, but where do you where do you feel like you guys fall? Well, out of the eight teams, we're the second seed, so I mean, I think we have a pretty good chance. We just, we tend to be a little inconsistent, so we just gotta make sure everyone's on the same page and they buy into to what we're going to do for to be successful. Are there any other Lanphier kids that play in this tournament or any, any tri type of travel hockey that we might know about? Uh not not in my not in my uh age other than Joe Box, he plays on the other Grizzlies team but other than that, no, not really. Okay. Well, I mean just curious if there were any other kids that, that might be involved. So, why don't you do this? 
give us uh, the information. Okay, where is it being played? Uh, Taylor Sportsplex okay. down in uh, Taylor. When do you specifically play? Uh, Friday at 4 p.m., Saturday at 8 a.m., and Saturday at 7.30 p.m., and then hopefully uh, we can play Sunday in the semis in the championship. That's a lot of hockey over there. Yeah, it is. Well, best of luck to you, Scott. Thank you. I appreciate it. Guys, anything else for the good of the whole? All right. I don't think so. Baseball's coming right around the corner. I Ooh. can't wait. <laughs> this is it for this week's edition of the Out of Bounds Sports Show. Till next week, we'll see you later.